Hello, uh, I'm going to give a talk about Emacs and org mode um, for research and specifically for my thesis, which I started recently. Um, I have an Emacs file with some slides per se, but I'm mostly not going to use it. And um, half of it is basically links to other files so I can demonstrate things. Uh, but first, a few words about what I'm doing. I am in environmental engineering and waste management, and we're doing a process for treating food waste. And since we need to capture a lot of data for that, I thought that if I had all of it inside Emacs, it would be much easier to find it when I want to write it. And in general, make my life easier. So for this, I wrote a small, small list file, name, which I named Orgrom Thesis, which has helper functions for this. So let's go to that file. Uh, the basic idea is that I have a, a thesis folder, which, and because after I'm done with it, a lot of the info I have will, will be archived from my Orgrom system because it's already very large and they don't want things that I no longer need. And inside it, I have some templates which initialize what I want um, much quicker than if I initialized everything with a default template. And the main two things I have are the log and measurement files. And the idea with the log files is that I write what I did that day and keep it as sort of like a journal, while the measurements are files which I have mostly tables and descriptions of the processes from which the tables were generated with data that we got from our experiments, so I can more easily find them. Uh, both both are immediately finished because the only thing I care about is that it has the name, as you can see here, log for this day or measurements for this day. So I don't need to input anything. And they have bound in a command on my Emacs that will auto-generate a file without me needing to do anything. For example, because today I didn't, we didn't do any measurements. I can generate a measurement file just show you how it works. It's basically this. I enter the, I do the key press, and it generates immediately. And this is in Orgrom by default. Uh, these are basically the templates, and then the capture functions, which call Orgrom capture hyphen the backend of Orgrom capturing with this template and this key. And then one thing that I consider very useful is being able to filter things based on my, uh, filter things that I want to view the only for my thesis. So I have a filter function that shows all, I, all nodes that are inside the thesis folder. Another, which is only for the log files and another for the measurements. And here are the predicates for this and the filter functions. And this code is also available in my GitHub if anyone wants it. Let me show you one moment. Hmm. Go, go to my dot files. In Emacs. It's in the libs folder where I keep all the external libraries that I install. And it's all huh? should be here. Cannot see. There's a chance that I haven't committed because I'm pretty sure I have it here. Yeah. I haven't committed it yet because it's a very recent file. I will do it after the talk. And okay, so moving on, and uh, the this is the one part of what I want to show, which is how I have integrated all the data for my thesis inside Orgrom. 
and I can also show you example an example log. It's in Greek, so you won't be able to read, but the idea is that I have a journal of what I did every day. And then a lot the, the rest of what I want to show you is on expert on how I track my experimental data with org mode and org tables because I really like using org tables for this. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be very interesting. See how you're using yeah. order tables. So, um, one first, I want to compare them to a conventional spreadsheet because, in my opinion, it's very it's, in some ways better. Because, for example, I can sync this. So, to to university, I only take my tablet. Don't take my laptop with me. Because, it's large and quite heavy so it's not so comfortable while the tablet is much smaller and easier to transport and i want to sync them to my computer and that is 10 times easier to do via git on my orgrim repository than um, syncing any spreadsheet format or something like that there's also cloud-based ones but then you need to always be connected on the to the internet. So I like offline, in general, I like offline solutions more. And org tables are also integrated in Orgrom. So together with all the log files that I have, I can very easily find all the tables that I have and not, not have to look on files of Excel files, for example, to find what I want. Um, and also, I, but also I can export them to any other format, like for example, CSV, which spreads the programs open with the org export functions, which I'll show you in a bit with that I will go to a table from all my files. And another thing that is that a lot of people don't know is that org tables have formulas and you can edit them and that from basic computations to even writing custom list functions, which do um, any computation that you can write in an e-list function, do it on your data, which can be uh, very, very useful. I haven't yet needed anything like that for my data, but I have only done the very preliminary experiments. So I have in mind, I may use it later. And the other thing that I'm going to show you is that you can auto-insert tables because I have um, some table formats that, because um, usually you do an experiment multiple times, you don't do it just once. Uh, you can have a snippet for the, for the data that you know you need to track your experiment and auto-insert it like that, which makes it much faster to initialize. And lastly, you can also do plots using the org plot function. So now, actually, no, um, here I can show you the snippet functionality. So I have this in thesis because, uh, for example, we can say that this is um, some of this is in Greek, so sorry about that. I will explain what it is. This is, for example, um, that I'm testing on a um, um, mixture number one and on zero hours, for example, the initial time. And that we put two ml of enzyme. I'm going to use the conditions that we used in our recent experiment. So we put two ml of the enzyme and we used um, enzymes called progen. So I will write that. Uh, the, this is the dilution rate, which we used one by three. Then I have, and um, this is agitation and temperature, which we set to 120 and 45 respectively. And they have it auto inserted because we're probably gonna use the same for everything. And this is the dilution to measure COD, the chemical oxygen demand, which we measure, which we used one by 50. And then for example, I can say that here, and um, what pH we calculated, and this is conductivity, and this is um, some measurements of weight, 
and absorbance, essentially, that we needed. And one thing that is useful is, for example, if I input here this, and um, which is how much was the weight, and before adding our um our sample, then this is after adding it. For example, these are around how much we got on our experiments. So, so I'm just inserting some numbers. And this is the volume that we took for the measurement. And if I update the formulas, and you get these. This is for some reason uh, the wrong number. Something is wrong in the in this. I don't remember why. But the idea is that now if we go into this file, that in the presentation it doesn't show the one moment I will close or three slide mode. And because for some reason it wasn't showing. Ah, here they are. Yeah, for some reason it wasn't showing these because it reads them like comments, I guess. Because they start with hashtag plus. So these are the table formats. You and um, when you're in a table, you can do all table edit formulas and we'll give you this where you can add various formulas, for example. And dollar shows the column number. And you can also do, for example, dollar for add two. And that defines and the second row. So dollar is for columns and the add sign is for rows in a table. And you can do computations. So these are very simple ones that I have here. And this percent is how it will show it. This is to show with four decimal pieces. And this is how formulas are done. And this finally something that I did that I don't have in Greek. And um, here we essentially calculated what I said previously. This is for a kinetic experiment. So it's not the same table as the other one I showed you, which we used for the for the preliminary experiment. And we're also going to be using it for optimization probably. And this is for kinetics. So we took samples in times from zero to 171, which is the next week, which I don't have the data yet because that is this week. And this was the previous one. And so we have the mass of the filters without anything, and then the mass after adding all the solids, because this is for calculating solids in our mixture, the mass with solids, this is total solids and this is volatile solids, which we put the high temperature at 550 degrees Celsius and see what remains, which what remains is us and the rest is the volatile solids. And I have these formulas which automatically insert these three columns because they're calculated from the previous ones. And it is a useful thing to have. And then the other very useful thing is plotting with this, which is, um, it's the org plot slash GNU plot. And the package I'm pretty sure is named or plot. Let me see what I um no oh it may be building to org. Let me check. So I know to tell you what to install if you need anything. No, it is built in actually. You don't need to install anything. <laughs> yeah, so org plot. Um you just need to have a GNU plot installed in on your system. And if I call this, it generates this plot, for example, which plots, and I will explain how the recipes work, but essentially this plots, um, 
This uses as an x-axis time and the y-axis, one of the data that I wanted to plot. And so it's how it progresses with time. And so the recipe is the title. You, um, you put the title of the plot. Um, end is the um, which row to use as the x-axis. Um, unfortunately, you need to do not row column. Unfortunately, you not only you can only do it by columns. I haven't found in the org plot documentation how to do it by rows. So it's good to have it like this. So that column three is time, which is the x-axis. And here I use this as the y-axis, which the y-axis is with depths. And you can also put multiple y-axis. And if I put seven and nine, it will plot both here. So this is basically just a list of numbers with as many rows as you want to plot. And, oh, oops, I accidentally closed it. Okay. And so we have this then, and this is the type that you want to 2D plot. And the other options are like 3D plots or heat maps or things like that, which, but I just want the simple 2D plot. Uh, the with keyword here, I say that I want line endpoints and I want the point type five, which is the square, because that's the one I wanted. That's um, in general, I like squares a lot. And then um, we set the X label to time and the Y label to say TSS. And here the legend is auto-generated. And Let me see, do I have anything else here? I think, yeah, I think if I'm not forgetting anything, that is mainly what I want to show. The um, the plot recipes, the forms. Ah, also I can show you that I have a snippet that if I type plot, it auto gives me this. I don't need to remember the format and it makes it easier for me. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's all I had to show.